I'm Lucas Garcia, a painter and tutor, and I'm going to be talking about approaching digital art from the point of view of a traditional painter. During a lockdown or otherwise, while some of us traditional painters may not have access to studios or materials or models, digital painting can be a good way to practice and improve our skills by applying the same techniques. This is not a software tutorial, but plenty of those are readily available. Here I'm using Adobe Photoshop and drawing with a basic Wacom tablet. I paint everything in one layer apart from a background colour layer which is an off-white just to kill the stark digital default white. For this study, which has a total painting time of about an hour, I'm doing a monochrome study from a photo reference. I'm a big fan of monochrome studies as a way to focus on drawing and values without the distraction of colour. It's something I do frequently in paint as well. It's a great thing to do if you have limited time as it speeds up the process and allows you to get much more out of one session. You could do the same in grayscale and learn just as much, but I just find it more visually engaging to use a scale of one colour. Here I've started with this orangey clay colour inspired by a recent study posted by Luca Boni, whose work is brilliant and great to refer to when it comes to approaching digital art from the point of view of a traditional painter. As you'll see, I don't start with a line drawing, but go straight in with maths, trying to keep a holistic way of working throughout the study. I don't always work this way, but here I wanted to get right into values and work out the drawing along the way. So the shapes start out approximately and are revisited and refined constantly. One of the things I took from Atelier training was that the drawing is never perfect, so having the mindset of being open to changing the position and shape of the features at any point will lead to more accurate drawing. The general values were established early on with three main tones, the lightest orange for the lights, a darker tone for the average shadow value and an even darker one for the hair and eyes. After this, I found the half tones between the average shadow and the lights and used these half tones to work out from the shadows and begin to soften some edges. I've keyed the value range to be quite narrow. By this, I mean establish my tonal parameters to be quite close together to force me to compress the values I see in my reference to replicate the process of painting from life. When we work from life, we must compress the values in our painting in order to represent the value difference we see in nature because the contrast caused by light and shadow is going to be far greater than the difference between light paint and dark paint. When we're working on a screen which uses actual light as opposed to pigment to show up both our reference and our painting, it's tempting to overcomplicate our values rather than simplifying and grouping our values which usually reads better in paintings anyway. I hope this little video has been useful. If you'd like to see more of my work, please follow me at Lucas Garcia Art on Instagram.